him is Shannon. We did an interview, and uh, man, it was great. Like it was, it was about thirty minutes, solid. It had everything. It had emotion. It had intrigue. And then we're done. I'm like, yes. And I look at the screen, and the video didn't record. I'm going, are you serious? And I had to call her back and be like, Miss Shannon. And that with. If it would have happened to anybody, it would be her, though, you know, because she was cool with it. You know, it was it was all right, but, dude, I felt I felt about this tall, where I was like, "Hey, Shannon, could you do this interview again?" And then we had internet. Thing again. Yeah. We had internet issues too, so then it was cutting out, and I'm just going, "I'm so sorry," and you know, and then we ended up doing that interview, and she, I mean, she did great the second time around as well, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a learning curve figuring out all this technology stuff, and I know that's kind of, you know, it is for me too. I I struggle with it just trying to do stuff at church. You know, it's 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 rough. It's it's definitely a learning curve for everyone. Well, everybody's in the same boat for sure. Yeah. What church do you uh you you play at a church, right? So I'm the music director at Westminster Presbyterian. Right off, Marty, yeah, right off Hardy Street. Uh, I started the job as choir director, youth direct, uh, music director in January. Man, yeah, that's right. That's right. Man, well, hey, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, my mentor, one of my mentors had the job. She was there for over 30 years. And uh, my voice teacher. And so I, yeah, I stepped in after her. So it's not, not just, you know, not just big shoes to fill, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, because you, you it, yeah, it, it means something to you for sure. It does. It does. Well, that's cool getting to do choir stuff, you know, vocal stuff, not just at school, but getting to do that, having having another outlet for it. I love working with kids, but I also, you know, I'm a choral director. That's what I got my master's in, and so I can do both things that I love to do, and that's, you know, I never thought I'd be able to do both, but but I, I can. So I started in January and then of course in March we had to take a big pause. And so that, you know, there's not enough, um, you know, there's not enough music in our lives right now. Um, and it's, it's hard trying to fill that void, but uh, yeah. we do what we can. You're absolutely correct. It is, it is, uh, it's difficult not being able to be around people and because that's the draw of music. It's not just, I've listened to a ton of music on Spotify. It's not the same because I can't go see a band. I can't, you know, can't go watch it with someone and go, man, did you see what the drummer did or what the sing? You know, that's what that's what's really fun about music or or sports are the same way too. It's like, yeah, I like the activity, but man, it's getting to see other people. The work work of it, like picking music and rehearsing music, even that is something I, you know. I'm used to a good hour, hour and 15 minute long rehearsal every week. I don't have that either. You know, it's all I do is sing to 20 people and have them sing back at me, kids included. And I haven't had any of it. It, It's really taken a toll. Yeah. When your life is predicated on like not just getting feedback, but analyzing feedback from students and from other musicians. Yeah. You take that away. I've dude, I, I've struggled with it too, man. I, I, and and I said it so much. Everybody's in that same boat, but it, I'm starting to get sick of saying that too. It's like, yeah, I I know we're in the same boat. I want to be out of that boat. Even like even the music classes I do at school, everything kind of feeds through me. You know, it's thirty or forty minutes, and everything goes through me. Everything I everything we do, it's all you know. I am on for thirty or forty minutes, and I miss that feeling of. It's just all funneling through me and my attitude, and you know, and I have a switch and I flick it on, and I, I don't have the ability to do that anymore. So even when I did my videos when we were in quarantine during March, it wasn't the same. You know, I could the class was almost structured the same, but their energy wasn't going through me. What I I wasn't in front of them helping them. You know, it was it was it was difficult. It it was hard. I I missed the energy of a room full of little musicians and adult musicians well i i totally i totally 
agree with you there. I, I, I did lessons online as well, thinking, man, well, you shouldn't really lose instructional time. You can, we have the internet. If this was 1918, we'd be in trouble, but it's 2020. So, we, you know, you have YouTube, you have all kinds of tools. But, and I was, I was noticing, I was getting super stressed. I'm going, why am I so stressed? It's because filming and doing a lesson, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, it felt like a show, but I didn't have the, the awesome part of a show where I was with other band members or, you know, like you, you, there were audience members who tell you good job. Like, I don't know, you might get a like online or something, but that's not the same as someone saying to your face, Hey man, you you did a great job. Yeah. I feel like I'm always kind of putting, not putting on a show, but it more or less is because like I said, I, I flip that switch and I'm on and not having the feedback or not having their faces, not having, you know, them do it back to me. It, it just loses so much of its effect. And I hate to say that, but I, I need the people in front of me. I, I crave it. I love it. You know, it's, it's absolutely well, and it's different. I, I try hard to, to get my way through it, but it, it was, it was a struggle. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate you being honest about it because that's uh I felt exactly the same way and that's why I'm excited about the fall where we actually get to be in front of people you know it's not going to look the same as it did you know pre-covid but at, at the same time to actually be in front of people whether you're wearing a mask or you're you are at a distance there's something to be said for actually being around people yeah it's not going to look the same but I want it to feel the same and that's going to be my big thing I want it to feel the same it did last year when you know they had their brand new teacher it was a new music class um i wanted to feel you know have that same amount of excitement i think that they did last year just getting somebody new in front of them yeah absolutely well there'll be a lot of new stuff that's for sure (laughs) there'll be some new feelings but yeah it's it's all about how you manage it and you know, it is cool that someone like you who is has gained some experience putting lessons online. You got the the cool studio in the backyard, and uh, you you can you'll be able to do things in person, but then also share your lessons with students who you know, because there are students who are going to do distance learning but still be part of Sacred Heart. Um, they'll be able to get they'll be able to get both of those. You know, you'll have people who are there that get to get Mr. Michael teaching them music. But even if you feel that you need to stay home, you still get that. Yeah. Miss Flanagan gave me a really good comment. We were talking during April um, that it watching your video felt the same as being in your classroom. And I really, because I tried really hard to make it feel the same um, because it wasn't the same, but I, you know, I wanted them to feel like they're still in my classroom. They're still in the music room. I'm just as silly as I've ever been. And, you know, really, hopefully that helped them embrace it a little bit more. Yeah, good sense of humor is, uh, goes a long way for sure. Well, what are you, uh, what have you been doing this summer? How are you keeping busy? Well, um, for a while we weren't doing too much, but my wife and I bought a house, so we, we painted for about three weeks before we got in, and then we unpacked for two weeks. And yesterday, I actually unpacked our last room that had everything in it that we didn't need. And uh, so we we've, we've been busy with that. It, it was a it was a blessing to to move <laughs> because we we could focus in and really have something to do. And and that's been it. I've I've had church work, which was kind of semi minimal. But uh, we we got in here and got into the new house and and have been busy with it, and we got a kitten, so that that was uh, busy too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah, they say moving was it moving and like childbirth are the two most stressful things you could go through as a human. So there you go. In the middle of a pandemic, you're like, hey, let's just do something else. Blessing in disguise, you know, just to have something to do. We were so excited about it. Well, at least you, you're – Every day for a couple of weeks, we just try and paint all day, all day, all day. And we were finally able to get moved in. And my little studio shed, we got it moved too. So it's sitting in the backyard where it was at the old house. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, do you have – do you have is the studio part of the house or is it outside? No, it's, it's the same big shed that we had before. We just got some people to move it for us. Yeah. 
Moved an entire shed. It was awesome. a miracle. It was a miracle to watch them move it. It was three guys and a winch and a couple of giant boards, and I don't know how they did it. Um. <laughs> yeah, moving a drum set is moving a drum set is plenty for me. So an entire an entire shed. Yeah, I don't. Know. It's not not really my forte, but yeah. So that's cool. You actually have the time to get your house in order, literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you looking for mostly this fall? Like what what's on your I have told I'm this was my first year teaching and I absolutely loved it and I've always done jobs that I'm not in love with. I, I just had to go to work. You know, I, I did restaurant stuff, I did warehouse stuff, and I finally was able to enjoy going to work every day. And I'm excited to go back to work. And I never really thought I'd say it, but I've been telling my wife Katie all summer. I just want to go back to work. I just want to go back to school. You know, I never thought it would cross my lips that I want to go back to school, but my goodness, I I can't wait. I'm excited to see kids. I'm excited to see friends. Um, I'm excited to have structure throughout the day. Yeah, I really, I'm excited to go back to work. Yeah, that structure, uh, I mean, I always crave that around this time of summer anyway. You know, I don't want to complain about having summers off. But I don't do I don't do well with spare time either. Brain just keeps going. I, I love having my time off. I love being able to sit in the house. Um, but it's been too much. It's <laughs> yeah. This I love a day off. You know, I love a day or two off. But when you're going months of okay, what's going on? Oh, I can just wear gym shorts all day. No, I can't stand. You know, it makes you just go crazy. I uh, I like a little bit of structure to my day to day work week, and I I'm excited to get that back. So what do you? I know we talked about what you're going to look forward to, but what are you going to actually do uh, within your classes? So last year, everyone came to my class, and I think as everyone knows, all the specials are are now going to their classes. So it'll look a little bit different. I you know I may not be able to lug my piano from class to class, but overall, it's it's going to look a lot the same. I think we're going to do start every class off with classical music listening kind of like we did in our videos and how we did throughout the year and then we'll have a non-classical listening and um we still have some mass music that we have to learn and especially for the the younger kids and and that'll be a little bit different than last year because they'll have masks on i won't have my piano but we'll still be able to learn and and deal with that um i have some other ideas you know that we can bring but a lot of that takes it'll be me bringing in things into the classroom. And so I'll have to deal with how I can disinfect them, how I can, you know, I can't just print out 20 sheets anymore. I'm going to have to print out 300 sheets. So everyone has one now. So that's going to take a little bit of time and seeing how many trees we really want to cut down before I bring all of this new stuff in. But we have some, some really cool things we can do. We have some, they're called boom whackers. They're pitch tubes, um, but again, I'll have to disinfect all those pitch tubes before I bring it in. But that's something I want to do. I have I bought some books last year, but now I'm going to have to copy them so we can use each child can have an individual sheet. And so we learn our rhythms, we learn our notes, and then we hand out these pitch sticks and we can play them as well. Um, so I'm going to have to think a little bit about that, about how often I can use them so I can actually disinfect them and use them properly. Um, but it's, it's, I want it to function as much as possible like we did last year, but I know that's not going to be the complete case. Uh, but we're, we're going to keep learning music. We're going to definitely do a lot of listening, which I think a lot of the kids love. And last year, a lot of them haven't been exposed to any classical music. So I'll ask them what instruments they hear. What a main thing I ask is what they feel. What does the music make you feel? What does it make you think about? Or a couple of times we closed our eyes and I said, what do you see? What does the music make you see? And so that is definitely going to stay the same. So there's going to be hopefully just as much structure in the class as there was last year, what they're used to. Yeah. I need to get some, some easy listening. I actually, I remember uh, Miss Ryan, when I was, I went to Sacred Heart Elementary School, second through eighth grade, and uh, Miss Ryan used to have Enya. You know, you remember Enya? And while while we were taking tests, because a lot of people would have test anxiety, and I think that's 
Yeah, man, you're gonna you're gonna earn your money this year for sure. Like you could you could. Uh, now I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, classical music will be great and very just like maybe like maybe some Bob Marley. It's just a little bit. It's just a little. Bit. I don't want to bore them to death, but uh, I definitely make them tell me what instruments they hear, instrument groups they hear, and then uh, I like I like it when they tell me what they feel, what it makes them feel like, what it makes them think about. Um, so it's a different way for them to experience music because it can emote a lot of different emotions, you know. And that brings us back to listening to music around other people. You know, when they come back and they're around their classmates, even if they're not, even if you can't figure out a way to give instruments to everyone, just being able to listen to music and then see you and talk to you, a different uh, adult from their homeroom teacher, that's going to be crucial for them. But we also listen to other music. We'll listen to, I mean, I listen, I know what's going to be said in the music before we listen to it, but country, older country and pop and rock, we listen to a lot of different genres. And uh, when we listen to the non-classical music, I make them tell me, what genre is this? Now, I may get very funny answers to what they think they're listening to, but um, especially the older ones, by the end of the year, they could really tell me, Okay, this is pop music. This is rock music. This is seventies music. We we do a lot of different kind of listening, and I think they really enjoy it. And it's every once in a while one will surprise me, and they already know the song before I you know when I start playing. It, it's like, what do you think this is? And they'll tell me who sings it. They'll tell me what kind of music it is. So it's I think it's fun. I think it's fun for them to really get um, introduced to a lot of different styles. Which is, I, I didn't get that in music class as a primary school, and elementary school child. And um, I think they enjoy it. I, I, I really do. Oh, I know they do. And it's one of those things you don't have to be an expert musician to have a feeling based on music. It makes everybody feel something no matter what kind of music it is. I told them, um, I don't, you know, I don't expect most of you to go into music. Some of you probably will, but I want you to be able to speak about it a little better i want you to be able to listen to music you like and know why you like it listen to music you don't like and know why you don't like it and not just say oh it's bad you know that's that's not the answer mr michael's quite looking for why is it bad why is it good why does it make you happy i say that with students too bad good it's different right like your bad is my good you know, we don't know, and it depends on genre, it depends on who's singing, what kind of, there's so many different variables. Yeah, and a lot of my good is they're bad, but I make them tell me, why? Why don't you like what I'm playing? Um, why don't, you know, you, and we'll have to actually, I make them tell me, even the ones that a little more sarcastic about why they don't like it. Okay, tell me why, uh, you know, and, and I think that builds a little bit of music character in them. Oh, and some of the strongest feelings, right, are are disgust, you know? I totally, I get that all the time, man. I totally get that. And I, it's one of those things, too, I think what you're doing is so great to get people at a young age thinking critically about music and art. And now that we have, we're the most distracted human beings in the history of planet Earth, like of all time, unless Atlantis was a thing, and I don't think it was. So it's one of those things where now, Music is not as much of a part of everyone's lives. Like people ask me, how did you get a head start on drums? Yeah, I have some some good musicians in the family, but it was because we everybody in the family listened to music together and talked about it. That's some of my favorite times, like like road trips especially, like hearing what my parents liked and they liked different things and you know, that was some of the best conversations of my entire life just talking about why do you like disco? Why do you like Latin jazz? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> So that's really cool that you're getting to do that with them. And I know that, you know, even the, I, rem, I remember the days where I knew if I said something snarky, you can ask Miss Yor, Rosemary Yor, I'm so sorry, Miss Yor. I see now, I see it now, you know. Uh, you say something snarky because you knew you'd get a laugh from your boys. I totally, I totally get that. I force that question on them. When they say something, I remember one student said something kind of smart, like, I hate it. I said, okay, why? And he just shook his head. I said, no, 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 no. Why? And I want, you know, and I kind of forced an answer out of him. He wasn't expecting me to do that, but um, 
we ended up getting an answer out of it. I said, that's fine. You know, you feel that way. That's okay. But I'm going to tell you why I like it. I'm going to tell you why I think this music is interesting. And we usually, that takes up about a third of the class is our classical listening and our non-classical listening. And I think it's, I think it's fun to expose them to music that they've never been exposed to before to make them think about it in a different way, even classical music, because that can invoke a lot of emotion, just a simple little phrase. And I'll pause it after 10 seconds and say, okay, what do you feel? And, you know, a lot of times it'll be big words, sad, happy. That I was like, that's fine. Why does it sound sad to you? And I'm, I make them think about it a little bit. And, um, uh, I may encourage, you know, I don't listen to a ton of classical music on my own, but I think I, I am encouraging some very young people to consider it as music they may like um, and to do more of it as they become older and, you know, not shy away from something they don't necessarily understand. Well, and it's one of those things that it's, it is like going to the gym for your brain. You know, if you listen to Mozart, there's a reason newborns, they say, you know, put the headphones on the the mom's tummy with, you know, listen to Mozart. And it's there's a reason it's Mozart and not, you know, Justin Bieber. As, you know, as great as Justin Bieber is. That, have you heard that new song, Intentions, he has with Quavo? That's a banger. That thing slaps, man. I'm telling you. But it's not, it's also, it doesn't really make you think. That's why I like it. You know, that's what, so that's really cool that you're getting them to do that. Man, that's so cool. It's cool to actually talk to another it's just cool to talk to another artist yeah like this isn't this isn't (laughs) we're not going to see a band right now but this is nice i don't even care about the podcast anymore this is just cool to one thing i'm really gonna miss is um i did a lot of solo singing with them Uh, i'm not the best piano player but i can play chords and i can kind of accompany them and I started them very young with it, and even by the end of, you know, March, I could get two or three preschoolers to come up in front of their class and sing the math songs, and, you know, by kindergarten, first grade, second grade on up, I could get them to do solo singing, and I, I do, we didn't do anything like that when I was growing up, not to toot my own horn too much, but I think I am really helping the little young singers who enjoy doing it. And I, the littler classes, you can make them all do it. You know, fourth and fifth grade, you may have a third of the class that's going to want to do it. But my hope is that by when the pre-K get into fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, they're all going to want to do it. They're all, you know, they're so jazzed to go sing in front of their whole class. I hope that, you know, the longer I'm here, which I don't plan on going anywhere, I love it, that I'm going to get all these little ones for six years and they all want to do it they all want to go sing a solo in front of their class even though it's mass music even though it's songs they all know they love getting up and singing in front of their classmates and that's something i'm i have to find some other way for them to really be out in front of everybody to lead everybody um and it even helps with the ones that are shy you know i make all of them do it and the shyest some of the shyest ones get up there and have the most beautiful voice and they just never knew. Their classmates never knew. You know, maybe even their parents never knew. This child has a wonderful voice, and they love to do it. And it, it can bring a lot of people out of their shell. Because I was a very shy child growing up, and it wasn't until I started singing in high school that I kind of broke that shell. And I hope that I can do that for, for our kids at Sacred Heart. That's amazing, because name a job that's not performance-based. Name a job that you just don't get to, you know, so it doesn't matter what you end up going into. You don't have to go into music. It's And then the other thing, too, is if you make it a cultural thing. Like, you're here, you're singing, you're, especially at Mass, I know Father Ken will appreciate that. Having the students sing, that's a beautiful thing. Now, when you get to fifth and sixth grade, that's where you start thinking you're too cool for, literally, you're too cool for school, literally. So, you can't, I mean... <laughs> That's fine, you know, but having that activity, having that strong base, when you do get more, when you do become more secure, uh, it, you know, towards hopefully in your mid high school years, but it takes some people longer. You have a skill, you have a, uh, you have an activity to do because I was the same way. I was never really shy, but I was loud 
to cover up the insecurity. So whereas someone might be real quiet, I was just, oh, I'm, I'm talking, I'm fine, nothing's wrong with me. And it's like, yeah, okay. And so you have, if you have an activity to gravitate towards, that is, that can be, that can be so, so vital to your, not just your social life, but just to your, your well-being. Mm -hmm. And I've had, I've had a couple of the older boys, you know, the boys are a little bit harder to get up and say, you're going to sing in front of your people. You know, it's, I think it's good that they can see an adult man that does that. And maybe that can take a little bit of that fear away, but I've had some, you know, some of the class clowny kind of kids and they get up and they're like going to joke around and do it. And then it ends up being beautiful and they didn't know, you know, like fourth or fifth grade, a couple of guys got up and, you know, kind of giggling and laughing through it. And all of a sudden they really started singing and they had a wonderful voice. And I never want to deny that from anyone. You know, I only want to embrace what comes out of somebody. Everybody's voice is different. Everybody's voice is special. And I, I think it caught a couple of them off guard. Like, Oh, I can do this. And it sounded really nice. And I enjoyed it. You know, it's, I, it was, I had a couple of really special moments last year where they surprised themselves and really enjoyed getting up and singing. And uh, I want to, I hope that continues on. I know it will, especially you know, if I can get the little ones really early, then hopefully we can beat some of those stigmas by the time they get to fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And it's not, it's not a big deal, you know. They don't have to feel masculine about it. They can, they can enjoy it. Yeah, and that's well, and also I think that's going to change as we move into the future. You know, it's there are certain societal norms that we're just gonna we're just gonna leave behind, and the whole well, I break all of those. <laughs> never underestimate the fact that uh, you know, that that's very important that teacher or that students see a male teacher you know, who wants them to sing, who wants them to be able to express themselves. That's the, that's the main thing, honestly. It's the not suppressing people's expression because people need to be able to, I mean, if you just hold it in, and especially now, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, this is one of those things where when they were talking about essential versus non-essential workers, I'm sitting there watching the news going, I am the least essential person of all time. But then you start thinking like, yeah, but also... You need that you need that outlet especially for kids too. You need that creative outlet. You need to be able to express yourselves in in different ways so that you just don't go insane. If you're only thinking about the, you know, what's wrong with the world and how to fix it. Now that's great that we have people to do that, but you also there's a place in society for uh, singing. There's a place for for painting, you know, any kind of visual art, playing an instrument. And that's so cool. That's why it's Sacred Heart is incredibly lucky and blessed to have you here, man. I'm so it's so exciting to have you here. People need joy in their lives too. Um, you know, we need to work, but we also need a little bit of happiness. And uh, I really try hard in my class to to make it a fun and joyful experience while also worshiping. You know, it's we practice you know our songs for worship, and that that's a big thing too. Even though my, myself, I am not Catholic, but I believe we worship the same God, and uh, I put my whole heart into what we do into Mass, and it, it means a lot to me that I can, you know, my my master's was in choral conducting, but it's also church music and choral conducting. So I, I think my position at, at the school and during Mass is a really good fit for what I studied. Um, it's, it's just as important as everything else I do. And that highlights, too, the diverse nature of Sacred Heart. You know, it is a Catholic school, but you not being Catholic, we're still, man, that's really awesome that, you know, we're, we can all worship together and, and, and we still, we're all, we're all in it together, man, for the, the greater, greater good. And, and thank the good Lord for uh, Miss Blythe, because I am not a real piano player. But she is, and she she does all of our accompanying during Mass, and I, I lead in singing, and we, we get together, you know, that morning before Mass and make sure we have everything kind of nice and tight. And uh, and then she also plays a wonderful piano piece during uh, the offering, uh, not the offering, during um, communion. Um, she, she does that, and so she is a real piano player, and she practices a piece, and puts that out there as well. So it's not just our young people's mass songs. 
they get a nice piece of music literature um, while we take communion, while we take uh, Eucharist. Shout out to Suki, teaches Spanish and strings and piano. Uh, yeah, that's so cool that, you know, it's so cool that you can you can do those things. And it's so cool for me personally, being from Hattiesburg, uh, that we have this, this, it's, this is the hip downtown art school. I agree. I mean, that's like, that's awesome. I, I can't go anywhere now without being yelled, Mr. Michael. I can't, you know, once Live at Five gets kicked up again, you know, I won't be able to walk around there without <laughs> being bombarded with, uh, with my little kids. And I, I, I like it. <laughs> my wife gets tickled at it a little too. Oh, yeah. When you're, you're a Hattiesburg celebrity, Mr. Michael. Hattiesburg celebrity. And I can also yell at kids for playing in that uh, ditch behind the stage. You know, now I feel like I can say, get out of there. You know, they know who I am now. Yeah, stop playing in that dirty water. Get <laughs> but yeah, that's not a stream you want to be playing in. Get out of there. To that turtle, get out of there. You know, you know who I am. Get out of that water. <laughs> <laughs> Always teaching. Always teaching. Doesn't matter. Even on the weekends. I could never yell at them before, but now I definitely can. Yeah, they don't have to hit you with the razor. You ever get the razor scooter in the ankle at Live at Five? That is, oh my gosh, I've gotten hit in the ankle. Just sit, stand and talk and some kid with a razor scooter and just blew around his, <laughs> around his mouth because he was eating like snow cones or something. It's always the same kid. It's not the same kid, but you know what I mean. You, man, that's, I miss that at Live at Five. I would... I would get hit in the ankle by a razor scooter if we could all just go listen to some music for a couple hours in a group. But, well, Mr. Michael, I appreciate you sitting down, and taking the time out, out of your summer uh, to chat with me. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Hey, do you have any messages for your students? Anything you want to say to them? Nothing more than I just look forward to seeing them. I, I'm excited to go back. Um, that's really it. I, I'm excited to go back to school. I'm really looking forward to it. I know there's some little crusaders out there who are looking forward to it as well. Uh, I really appreciate it. Man, have a good rest of your day and uh, stay safe out there. Good to talk to you. Yeah, man. Hey, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey!